Yo, what's good, my movie lovers? It's your boy Anthony here, and get ready, because we're about to get it in with this review of the brand new Roadhouse. Now, for those of you who might be new, and I'm, I'm talking to you Gen Zers out there, the original Roadhouse is a movie from the 1900s. It was a cult classic, and it was known for its fun bit comedy. It's a little bit of an over-the-top action movie with plenty of cheesy dialogue and, of course, the legendary performance of Patrick Swayze as Dalton. Now, if you haven't seen the original movie, then I highly recommend that you do. It's I think it's streaming on HBO Max right now, so you can check it out before checking out this reboot. And for those of you who are born in the 1900s like I was, I'm going to let you know that this reboot stays true to the spirit of the original while adding a fresh coat of paint and a whole lot of laughs. So, what is Roadhouse about? Let's let's get into it. Jake Gyllenhaal plays ex-UFC fighter Elwood Dalton. Elwood, for, you know, reasons, heads south to the Florida Keys and starts seeking a fresh start. And he actually lives a job as a bouncer at the infamous Roadhouse, a bar notorious for its very rowdy clientele. Elwood soon finds himself entangled in a web of corruption as he clashes with a ruthless businessman who is trying to muscle in on the local businesses. Now, with the help of a quirky cast of characters, including Daniela Melchior as a feisty doctor and a group of loyal barflies, Elwood must clean up the Roan house, take down Brant, and maybe even find a little redemption along the way. Now that we know what the movie is about, let's start breaking this down and starting with the good stuff. First off, the filmmakers must have made a deal with the DeSantis because the Florida Keys in this movie have never looked better. I'm looking up Airbnbs right now because of this movie. Seriously, every single scene of that Florida blue sky with those clear Florida blue waters, to me, screams vacation time. Florida looks so good. It's enough to make you forget about the crazy Florida fight club scenes happening two blocks down. Oh, well, you know, almost. Anyway, speaking of pummeling, Connor friggin' McGregor. Yo, this mofo right here is amazing in this movie. Connor brings a kinetic energy that just makes every scene electrifying when he's on screen. You just never know what this guy will or won't do, and it is freaking awesome. Roadhouse sets the tone for this character, he knocks, right from the beginning with the most outrageous introduction this side of Sub-Zero in Mortal Kombat. Now, I won't ruin it, but I need you to come back here and let me know what you think of Conor friggin' McGregor in this movie. And the fight choreography in this movie is on point. Forget about, you know, the shaky cam and the jump cuts. This ain't your dad's action fight. Nah, this is a martial arts ballet with every punch, kick, and throw feeling like Little Mac going against Mike Tyson's punch out. Each hit is beautifully brutal in the best way possible. Now, the first brawl sets the tone for the whole film. It's intense, it's beautifully shot, and it's guaranteed to make you wince, you know, in a good way, while honestly leaving you in shock and awe with the awesome camera work on display. The dialogue is witty, the situations are absurd, you know, think bad guys with motorcycles, mood swings, and an affinity for fistfights in a bar so beautiful it should be on a postcard, and Jake Gyllenhaal delivers his dry humor perfectly as the new Elwood Dalton. We'll get into Elwood a bit later, but let's, you know, let's just say he brings a whole new kind of charisma to the role, proving you can be a butt-kicking bouncer and still have a soft sense of humor. The filmmakers knew they had to balance the action with some humor, and that's where the script truly shines. For example, the bands in the Roadhouse play no matter what. There's a bar brawl happening? Keep playing. Somebody's getting tossed out the window and set on fire. Please. They're up in there like turned down for what? Look, it's a bizarre detail that somehow works perfectly in this wacky world. It adds to the overall chaos and absurdity. I just don't understand how they managed to stay so focused in all that mayhem. Anyway, Roadhouse doesn't waste your time with long speeches or boring exposition. The story of Elwood Dalton unfolds through action, clever camera work, and some truly bizarre dream sequences. Hello, boat dreams. The other bad guy in this movie, Grant, played by Billy Magnuson, is a character you love to hate. 
He's equal parts terrifying, privileged, and ineptly hilarious. He leads a crew of goons in Florida, with one dude even becoming a bit of an Elwood Dalton fanboy. And it's seriously like watching a supervillain convention gone wrong. And honestly, I'm kinda here for it. In the final showdown, glorious. It's everything you want in a climax. There's payback for the good guys, redemption for Elwood, and a healthy dose of holy crap that was awesome thrown in for good measure. Now, we lay it on heavy about the good. We all know no movie is perfect, we know this, so let's talk about a few hiccups on the Seven Mile Bridge to Glory. Our main man Elwood Dalton is a bit of an enigma, right? We get glimpses of his past as a UFC fighter, but his motivations and personality remain more than a little vague. For the most part, that's okay, but the movie has a habit of teasing the idea that we might learn more about his past. There's so much we just don't know about his character, and Roadhouse doesn't really take the time to explain it, so it results in a character without a lot of depth. And that's not the only issue. I am warming up to Danielle Melchior ever since I took notice of her in the Suicide Squad, but the whole love interest angle feels a bit shoehorned in lacking the development needed to feel truly meaningful. One minute Elwood's all stoic badass bouncer, the next he's smooching with the love interest that randomly took an interest in him. Look, it's not a bad thing necessarily, but the transition feels a bit rushed. I like Daniela's performance in this movie and she's the right level of badass and sex appeal to match Elwood's energy, but the script didn't do her character justice when it comes to her having a great introduction. And then there's Post Malone. Look, I don't want to spoil Post Malone's role in this movie. We're led to believe he might be... Mm. Mm. Let's just say it feels like a wasted opportunity. Do me a favor, right? Because I really can't say anything about Post Malone. But do me a favor, watch the movie, come back and tell me if you think they wasted Post Malone in this. Anyway, overall, look, this this movie, it's not trying to win any Oscars, right? It's a movie just trying to entertain you with a little bit of Florida action, some Florida humor, and some good old-fashioned Florida weirdness. And it does entertain. It does. If you're looking for a film with a plot tighter than a boa constrictor's grip, this might not be it. The story unfolds at a breakneck pace, relying more on action sequences and wacky situations to move things forward than complex character development. But hey, sometimes you just want to see bad guys get their asses kicked in a glorious choreographed fight scene, right? This is a movie that knows exactly what it is and doesn't try to be anything else, right? So just grab a drink, maybe some snacks because, trust me, and get ready for the fight of your life. Oh, and about that gator. Let's just say homie right there is the real MVP, but that's a story for another time. Anyway, what did you think of the movie? That's all I have for this one. I'm going to be digging in the comments for like the first hour after this is published because I really want to see what you guys think of the movie. Let me know. Otherwise, hey, I'll check you all later. Be good. Peace.